Hello chess fans, today I want to show you an over the board game I played against the GM. So in this game I was already shocked on move 1 because my opponent actually had a thousand games with the move 1 e4. So I was expecting 1 e4 and I prepared for around an hour for the move 1 e4 and I prepared some nice lines and he shocked me at the board with my knight f3. So one thing I did know is that my opponent does not have a lot of experience in this so I tried to play a tricky line. So I went for d5, and here I wasn't sure what to expect. He could play c4, e3, b3, d4, g3. He decided to go for g3, which is the most popular option. And here there's a lot of options. Like I could have gone for a main line. I could have gone for any number of sidelines. Uh, there's this interesting sideline with e6 and b5. But I decided that I wanted to play something a little bit offbeat, hopefully that he didn't know well, because I know he doesn't play this line at all. So I went for knight d7, and this move is really, really trendy recently especially on the top level. Uh, recently, there's been a lot of games here. And I thought, okay, maybe my opponent might go bishop g2, in which case after e5, I've equalized. But instead, he went d4 with the idea to stop e5. And that's sort of the idea with knight d7, is I want to play e5, but uh, generally, the knight doesn't really want to go to c6 because he can go for this move d4. And the knight wants to allow the pawn to move. So sometimes there's ideas with bishop f5. Okay, but I went knight d7, and now the idea is, okay, my c-pawn is still flexible. Now I will stop his c-pawn from moving with this move knight b6. And now I'm stopping his c-pawn from moving. And there's been a lot of games here recently. Uh, I think there was a recent game with uh, Nepo and Prague. I think Prague was white against Nepo, and uh, Prague went for this move knight c3, which is very, very interesting. And then after bishop f5, there was this move uh, knight h4 attacking the bishop. And then here, uh, one of the popular ways to play, at least, was e6, and after takes, takes, Bishop g2, c6 defending the pawn, and then here you have ideas of going f3, e4 in the future. And this position seemingly does give white the advantage. So I was expecting knight c3 because this has been really trendy recently. I was hoping my opponent hadn't seen any recent games. And it turns out my opponent really hadn't. They didn't really know this position, and they played a novelty here, bishop f4. So one of the other main lines here is to go knight bd2, you know, to prepare c4 in some positions, also to just sort of wait to see what uh, black's going to do. And my opponent thought they could improve on that with this move bishop f4. Now, after knight bd2, the bishop is outside the pawn chain. And it's not being blocked in. And also, usually a problem with bishop f4 in the London is that you can go c5 and queen b6 with this double attack. But here, okay, I, I can never play queen c6. So already here, I was like completely out of theory. The only move I actually knew was knight c3, but that's not even the main line. The main line is bishop g2. So I really didn't know any theory here. I was improvising over the board. So I went for bishop f5. And my opponent went for knight bd2. And here I thought my opponent has a subtle threat. So like if they go knight h4 right now, uh, it's possible that I can go bishop e4, provoke f3, and then go bishop back to g6. This is possible. Or I could maybe just go uh, bishop b7, which was which was my idea with by not going e6 or knight f6. So but after knight bd2, here I decided to go for this move knight f6 because now uh, they're covering e4. But also if I play a move like e6, I thought that knight h4, okay, actually on knight h4 immediately I have g5. But I thought I have bishop g2 and I go for a move like knight, knight f6, then they could go for knight h4. So this was sort of uh, giving me some trouble that they could win my bishop like this. And now after knight h4, it looks like I should just give up the bishop pair. And then here I thought I was slightly worse because, okay, their position is quite nice. So instead I went knight f6 to meet knight h4, which my opponent did with this move bishop d7. And now I'm keeping the bishop and, you know, my opponent's pieces could be hit by h6. Like... Next, if they go for bishop g2, I thought I was going to play h6, here knight f3, and then here I thought I was going to go bishop f5 back. And I thought that I sort of achieved what I wanted. I achieved the London setup. This bishop is slightly misplaced. I mean, his pieces are sort of tripping on each other. So I thought my position would equal probably here. And the engine seems to agree. But instead, he went for this move f3. And I think just logically speaking, like, it just doesn't make any sense, right? His idea is to go e4, but I went for e6 in the game after a little think. And after e4, you realize, like, even if he gets e5, like, he just has a very bad French. Because, okay, this knight is offside, this pawn is on f3, and this pawn's on g3. The pawn might even rather be on g2, but, okay, here it does matter because it's defending the knight. But, yeah, it's just a very, very strange position, and I thought, okay, this can't be correct. And here I thought for a very long time, and the two moves I was considering were either c5 or d takes, t takes, and c5. And I re highly recommend pausing here because here I spent, like, 30 minutes and I actually made the best move, but I made the best move with a bad idea. And here there's, I think there's a pretty simple like way to just get a winning advantage for black here, which I just missed. So see if you can take a few seconds to find it. Like, I mean, it's not even very difficult at all. I don't think I'm not sure why it took so long 
and I wasn't able to find it either. So yeah, definitely take your time here. See if you can find the best move. So the best move is takes here, which I did do in the game. And then for F takes, here you have a very simple move. Bishop C6. And you are you just have a double attack. And here you're just winning a pawn. So I just didn't see this at all. It, the line's even quite simple. Like the best engine line is Bishop D3. But obviously, okay, if they play Bishop D3 takes and Rook B1, this is the engine line. Okay, you're not afraid of this, right? So what you maybe had to calculate is move D5. Which looks pretty scary and after takes to they go e5 and for example i don't know if you go for a nonchalant move like knight fd7 maybe they have some counterplay after this with bishop d3 but okay your bishop's bad who cares engine says it's it's good it's good for black so you just would win the pawn so yeah i didn't see any of that and i instead decided to go for c5 which made a lot of sense to me if they go for a move like c3 after takes takes and now bishop c6 it made more sense because now i'm not blocking my pawn and yeah now i'm completely winning so the only move i really saw that they could play is takes here if they go like queen e2 i thought i just win this pawn and i'm just up a pawn so they took and then here I, again i think i psyched myself out really i should just take and castle and then i'm up on development all my pieces are better my bishop has this nice c6 square and yeah they're not it's misplaced on h4 this should be a very big advantage but instead i went knight c or sorry i went knight a4 and i spoiled they went for knight c4 with the idea to not allow him to castle queenside because one of the things i was worried about is that if i take with the bishop he can go for a queen e2 defending the pawn and after i castle he can castle queenside and i didn't like this because i didn't really see myself having any attack and i thought i sort of saw some ghosts i thought that he was going to attack me okay but instead of that i went knight a4 i was expecting this move b4 in which case my plan was to go bishop c6 attacking the pawn and then here for example if he defends the pawn i thought that queen d4 is a nice fork and then i'm also attacking this so i thought he couldn't do that uh, so he, sorry i thought he couldn't play b4 apparently it's the best move because after bishop c6 he can go for bishop e5 which i thought just went the pawn but okay he has bishop e5 yeah which i did not see yeah i didn't see bishop e5 so maybe on here i'm just supposed to go knight d7 and on bishop d4 go b6 and i win this pawn okay okay interesting i didn't see that but uh, instead here I was expecting the move that he played he played knight c4 which I thought was a pretty natural move apparently it's bad because I'm supposed to play here which okay this is just very hard to play or not there because he loses b2 but takes here and now if he loses b2 at least he can go queen a3 in the knight I thought is a little bit loose now there's this pin okay engine doesn't care the engine is just ruthless sometimes but i saw some ghosts and i decided to take with the knight also that was my whole idea to bring the knight to c5 and here he went e5 which again i thought was strange i thought this e pawn does a nice job of preventing this knight from coming in so i thought he was going to go queen e2 but again he went e5 knight d5 and knight f3 and here i think i made the first sort of real mistake from black up to this point i think i've played quite naturally and i think i won't really fault my play too much for going uh this move knight a4 knight c5 uh but yeah, here I think I should just uh, take the bishop and then just start developing with bishop c6 and bishop e7. And I just have the bishop here and his structure is bad. So this this is just a very simple advantage. I'm minus one here and it's yeah, it's pretty clear to me why I'm better. Like I have the bishop here. I have better, not better pieces, but at least more natural pieces and his structure is weak. And he has no attack or anything. So instead of that, uh, I went for bishop c6 which gives him the option to save his bishop or take my bishop but he didn't do either of those he went for here and now I took and then here I made a, a huge mistake at this point I was at 10 minutes and I really just didn't know what to do I had no plans and apparently here I'm just supposed to finish development and that's something that I think that uh, I can really take as a lesson from this game when you're positionally better like here I know I'm positionally better just finish your development and then you can start trading but then you can also start attacking their weaknesses like they can have a pawn on f4 they have this pawn on f4 maybe i can try to get the knight to f5 that would be nice or maybe i can try to attack with this minority attack or you know put pressure on both sides of the position like it doesn't matter i have the bishop here and i'm positionally better i can do really whatever i want i don't need to rush anything but instead i went for this move knight e4 to like prevent knight d6 and my idea was to go queen e2 to go uh bishop c5 also to free the square and then I, d I didn't really see a move for him here. For example, if he went rook d1, I thought I had bishop d5 with the ideas to go here, to go queen c7, to go b5 even, and queen a5. And here I thought I also have ideas to go uh, knight c2. Wait, c3? Knight d6. Okay, this is somehow good for him. 
okay that's a little bit strange but uh yeah th that was my idea but then he took here and i thought i thought he wouldn't do this because i thought it was just really really drawish but apparently it's actually not as drawish as i thought and we get this position I went for f6, looking to create an isolated pawn here. He went knight f3. So I go bishop c5, eyeing this, king e2. And yeah, here's my last chance to sort of get the advantage. I could have gone for this move f takes e5 after knight takes e5, go for this move rook d4, threatening here. Now I was worried about this move knight d3, and then after bishop d6, here, here. I evaluated this position as slightly worse for me. Turns out it's slightly better for me, but I still kind of don't really entirely see it. Looks, looks at least pretty equal. Yeah, I, I still don't really see it. So I don't really blame myself for not finding this. Instead, I went king e7. And here, I'm also, we're both really low on time. He went here. And now here, I do blame myself. I really should have played this move, uh, rook d5. And the idea is if, if he goes c4, I'm just willing to go back. And I provoke the c4 move, uh, which allows him to be less flexible. Or, yeah, wait, maybe c4 is fine. Yeah, well, I thought I should have gone rook d5, but... I took took went here, takes takes, and here I'm in an equal end game, but it's, it's a difficult position to play, so I end up uh, not playing it well. Here, what I'm supposed to do is, okay, if he ever takes here, I mean it's pretty clearly a draw. I should probably yeah take with the pawn and then fix the weakness on f4 and then just keep on targeting it. And his king or knight can't move; one of them can't move. So at some point, I went king d7 here, bishop c7. These moves are not really so important. Yeah, I'm up until here. That this is my last chance. Basically, what I'm supposed to do is take here. And after take here, go king d7. And after bishop d8, I'm going to go g5 and h5. And I have to try to get some counterplay on the king side. Because otherwise, I'm just going to lose. But instead, I go bishop b8, which gives him a really nice move here. Uh, after bishop b8, he has his move knight d4. And then if I take here, he has knight c6 with his fork. So I can't take, obviously. It's why previously, uh, uh, let's say I play a move like h6. Knight d4 is not winning. Because, okay, his idea is e5. But here I can go takes and then I'm winning this pawn. And there's no, I can go king e7. And there's no fork here. So uh, after bishop b8, knight d4, king d7, he has this move f5. And then now if I take here, he has this fork. And then if I go anywhere else, king e8, he still wins this. So after this, I have to take here. In which case he can go here. I pretty much have to go, if I go king c7, he just goes here. He gains a full tempo. So I have to go king e7, now he takes, he, and I think he just takes this one, yeah, he just takes this one, and here I should be losing, because his pawns are further pushed up the board. Okay, but instead he missed that, admittedly, like, we both had one mini on the clock, it's not easy to see. And then again, I think that here, uh, I should go king d7, but I went bishop e8, a6, king d7, and up to this point it's fine, now my opponent goes f5. And now's the last moment where I have a very, very clear draw. And yeah, here I have one minute, so see if you can find the best move. Because obviously he's attacking your pawn. There's two moves. Either take here or go e5. I ended up doing the wrong one, and I think I just I just kind of hallucinated something. I, I saw the winning line he played in the game, and I was just like, wait, what? So yeah, here I think the easy draw is just to take. And I just wasn't thinking straight. After here, here, uh, I was worried about knight e6, and then if I go uh, bishop c3, I thought this might be winning after takes here. But yeah, I think I just hallucinated because this c5 pawn is just hanging. I thought that he goes here and then I go here and I'm losing. But yeah, the c this c5 pawn is hanging. So I think that was the easy draw if I just took here. But instead I went for e5, which is just a complete blunder. Because he played this very, very accurate continuation. He went for an 82, looking to go to this e4 square. And then here I thought I had bishop a7 and a5. Because if he goes like knight c3 or something, I thought I have a5, and then I get this tempo, and then apparently here I'm also losing, which I missed that the knight gets the e4 defending the pawn, but yeah, here he played very clinically, I went a5, here I don't think I have a chance, here I'm supposed to go for this move e4, and after takes now a5, but again, this is just very unnatural, but I went a5 now, and now after knight c3 takes knight e4, I realized that he can pick this pawn up at any time, and in this position I resigned. After here, king c4, I'm going to lose this pawn. And actually here, I was a little bit hopeful that I might have some sort of... Uh, sorry, I might have some sort of uh, fortress. Because here I can go for this move, uh, bishop c7. And his king can't get in this way. But here he would go a5. And after bishop here, a6, bishop a7. Notice that his king also still can't get in. 
the king can't get in this way, right? The king can't get on this side of the board. So here I just saw you just start marching the king over here. And then if my king comes to defend, he has knight d6, knight c8. So yeah, after I saw this, I was just like, okay, it's it's game over. I don't have any, any more things to do. And I decided to resign. I resigned after after 94 and I just saw this position I thought that he's just gonna take my pawn push his pawn to a6 and then march his king over here and yeah I think he would have pretty easily seen that so I decided to resign so I think a few things to learn from this game once you have an advantage you don't need to rush things and don't don't see ghosts also take your time in like every position in a classical game there's really no need for me to play c5 as quickly as I did and not missing bishop c6 is just like like if you give me again, if you put me against a fifteen hundred, I see bishop c six in like five seconds, and I'm just like, oh, he blundered a pawn. But yeah, against a GM, you just give them this unanimous level of respect, and you start missing things. You start just playing badly. I think that's another thing that I realized in this game is that the difference between me and and at least this particular GM, I don't feel like is a lot. Like I don't feel like it's four hundred Elo, Fide, and like three hundred Elo CFC. It might be three hundred Elo because I lost this game. But, uh, like, I just didn't really feel the the GM strength from this game. I, like, I thought I got a really nice position. I think F3 is a very, very unnatural move that most players don't play, probably because my opponent was unfamiliar with D4 openings and ready openings. But, yeah, I really thought I had some chances in this game, and it was, it was unfortunate that I lost this game. But, okay, okay, you lose games to GM, you don't get too sad. Actually, in the next game after this, I might show that one. I made a one-move blunder of a rook. So <laughs> that game was my worst game of this tournament. But I actually liked the way I played this tournament because I ended up beating two 2150s, and I thought those were those were both very nice games that I played. So yeah, that's the end of today's video, guys. If you liked this video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.